Welcome in the third episode. In today's episode we will implement our set game scene. If you did not subscribe to this channel yet, please consider to do so. You can hit the subscribe button below and turn on the bell icon so you will not miss any future release. So let's just quickly open our project now and then uh, go to the set game scene. And as you see in this scene we have just the just the blue background. The first thing we just gonna we just gonna add some background. So I will right click in a hierarchy UI image and I will call this image background. Let's add the, uh, the texture. So go to the graphics folder, game UI graphics, and then let's click on the background and then drag and drop this background onto the source image. And then we're going to set the width and the height. So the width will be 480 and the height will be 854. Okay, so we have our background in. Now let's uh, quickly go and set our camera. So I will just click on the camera, make sure the projection is set to orthographic and I will change the size to be 1.25 and I will leave all of the rest of the settings as they are now. The, the, the one thing I want to do is uh, I want to go to the scripts folder now and then drag and drop this button behavior onto the main camera. Okay, so we can use this functionality in this game as well. So the next thing, let's click on our canvas and we need to set this canvas, uh, the render mode in the canvas to be screen space camera. And then we have to drag and drop this main camera onto this render camera. And then let's change the canvas color to be scale with screen size. And I will change this uh, X to be 480 and, uh, and the Y to be 854. And then I will change this, uh, this match to be 0 0.5. Okay, so just apply the settings in and now we can add uh, the rest of the UI elements. So the first thing we want to add is um, right click on the canvas UI and then bottom. And I will call this bottom to be 10 piles. Okay. And let's remove the te text from it. Now we can go to the game UI graphics and we can just find the 10 piles bottom and then drag and drop this texture onto the source image. And I will change this bottom width and the height to be 120 by 120. So we have a nice square. And then let's uh, change the transition to from the color, color tint to the sp sprite swap. And now we can apply our different sprites. So this is the red sprite. So whenever you select this button, the button will turn red. So I will just drag this red sprite and put on the highlight color on the press color and on the selected color. Okay, so I just apply those uh, the display the bottom down graphic on the on those colors. So now when you press play, you should see like the sprite is changing, and when you press is actually is is actually stays red. Okay, so we can stop now. Let's add another button. Uh, actually, let's first of all position this button to be to be somewhere here and maybe a bit up. Okay, so I'll just right click on the stand pairs and then duplicate. And I will name the next button to be 15 pairs. Okay, let's move it on the side over here and let's change the, the graphics. So I will just grab this 15 pairs graphic and put on the source image. And then let's replace all of those buttons from this uh, from this button script. So I will just grab this red 15 and then replace those three buttons. Okay, make sure you do for all of them. And then we need one more button uh, for the for the pairs. So I will just duplicate the 15 pairs. And I will name this button 20. And then the same, we want to apply the 20 sprite and then red one for the select, highlight and then uh, and then pressed. Okay, and we can move this 20 to the side as well. Right, so we have the, these three buttons. I think we can move them down a bit. Okay, I think they look good. So now let's add some text over here. Uh, so I just right click on the canvas, UI image. And then for this image, I just gonna find the 
the page's text and I will just drag and drop this text onto the source image and then I will set the set native size and I will scale it down to maybe 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 actually maybe 0 0.3 and 0 0.3 okay I think that looks good and move it up above the above the pair buttons I think we need to make some space for the for the back button on the top so I just grab all of those three buttons holding shift and then move them down and then I will move this text down to be right above them okay and I will change this uh, this image name to be pair text okay so now let's add some the, some categories. So first of all, I will just right click on the canvas UI image and then I will name it categories text, category text. And then I will just find the category of writing and drag and drop this, uh, this writing on the source image. Then press the set native size change the scale to 0 0.3 0 0.3 okay and then move it down a bit maybe over over here and now we need to add a two two pairs button so i will just right click on the canvas again ui button and then i will name this button to be fruits button fruits button let's replace the sprite so, so the source image will be the fruit button up the blue one and then let's change the transition to be sp sprite swap and then let's uh, replace uh, let's put this uh, fruit town button onto the three highlight press and then select it okay and then i will change the size to be 150 by 150 and move it down and to this to the left okay you can change the size if you like. I'm actually make it 160, a bit bigger. Okay, and then let's uh, let's just uh, go back now to this fruit button and then remove the text. Okay, so now I will right click on this fruit buttons and then duplicate it, and I will name it the veg button. And then let's uh, replace the source image. So I will just find the veg graphic, which is here, the blue one. Drag and drop it onto the source image, and then replace all of those three uh, sprites with the red one, red ve vegetable one. Okay. And then I will move move it to the to the right on the exposition, somewhere here. The last thing we need to, to add is the, the back button. So right click on the canvas UI button and I will name it back button. Okay, the source image uh, will be find the back texture, which is which is back button and then drag and drop it on the source image. And I will change the size to be 80 by 80. Should be 80. Okay, remove the text component from here. And then I will move this button up and to the to the right. Okay, so now the back button should actually bring us back to, the, to our main menu. So I will just go to the on click event, click the small plus and then drag and drop the main camera onto it. From the functions, let's select the button behavior and then load scene. And then we want to load scene. We want to load our main menu. Okay, so make sure you don't make any spelling mistake. I think I made a spelling mistake in the name of the main menu. So I will just copy it. Actually, let's rename it. So it should be main menu. Okay, so let's select the back button again. And then let's put the name of the scene to be the main menu. Okay. So make sure you put the right name. And now we can test it. So rest plus pray. So now when you go onto the any of the button, you the button should be should should turn red. And then if you press play, 
uh, press back, to, you're going back to the main menu, and then if you press play, you're going back to this scene, okay? So our menu is, uh, is working fine now. Okay, now we need to implement the behavior of those buttons. So we're not gonna simply start the game. On this scene, we're gonna actually set the game itself. So we're gonna set how many categories we wanna have, and uh, how what what the what the what the puzzle images will be based on this on the on the category selection. In order to do that, we will have to create a um, few scripts. So let's first of all start from creating the game settings script. So I will just go to the scripts folder and then right click create C sharp script, and I will call the script game settings. Okay, let's open the script. So first of all, let's actually remove these comments. And then right at the top, I will just add few variables. So first one will be private integer, and that's gonna be settings. Another one will be private const int, and that's gonna be the setting number. And I will set it to two because we need to set two settings in order to start the game. First one is the power number and the second one is what category we wanna play. So right below, I will create some enums. So public enum e power number. And then first one will be not set will be equal to zero. Then e ten pairs will be equal to ten. E twenty pairs will be equal to twenty to twenty. And actually in between we need to create e fifteen. 15 pairs will be equal to 15, okay? So we have all of the pairs which uh, which are re reflect the, the buttons we just created. So the next enum, we wanna have the public enum e puzzle puzzle categories and we have currently just two categories. The first one, actually the first one will be not set. So if it's not sad, another one will be fruits, and the next one will be vegetables. Okay. So the next, the next structure, the next thing we want, we want to create is the structure of our settings. So public struct. settings okay and this structure will hold all of the our settings available in the game so the first setting is the power number so we just call it e pair number and that's gonna be the actually we need to make it public pairs num number and then another one will be public e puzzle categories puzzle category okay so right below the settings we want to we want to create instance of this settings so private settings and then I will call it game settings okay so this this is gonna be the settings which we're gonna set from our set game and we actually want to make sure this script is not de destroyed whenever we change the scene so we will do it um, we will do it as a singleton so i will call it public static game settings which is should be match the name of our class and then i will call it instance okay and then we need to create the awake method so void awake so if instance is equal to null, then we want to call don't destroy on load this. 
and then instance will be equal to this okay so when I just assign the instance and then else destroy destroy this so that means the instance has already been created and we want to just destroy the new object so in our start method now we need to initialize all of our settings so the first thing will be the game settings in the start method I will just call the game settings will be equal to new settings okay and then right below the start method I will create another function we don't need the update method in this class so I'll just delete it and then below the start method I will create public function so public void and this function will be called set uh, will be called set per number and we want to pass the e pi numbers number okay and then we want to check if our game settings dot pi number uh, I just want to change the name of this number because it should be with the low u okay so the game setting pi number is equal to e pi number is not set we want to increase our settings counter plus plus okay and then game settings dot pi number will be equal to number so this is the first function the next function is we want to create something similar for the setting the categories so right below this I will create another public function void and then set puzzle categories set puzzle categories and then e puzzle categories and I will call it cut and then the same if game settings dot puzzle category will be equal to e puzzle category no set we want to increase the settings counter okay the next line will be the game settings dot puzzle categories will be equal to cut so we just want to assign this category then let's uh, right below I want to create some getter function so public e pair number get pair number And then we want to return game settings dot pay number and then right below I want to create another function public e categories puzzle categories get puzzle category and then return game settings dot puzzle category okay so this is the function we just want to create and then right below I want to create the last function in this class which will be public void reset game settings reset game settings okay and then in the reset game settings we want to of course set the games settings to be equal to zero and then game settings dot puzzle categories will be equal to e puzzle categories not set and then game settings dot pair numbers will be equal to e pair numbers not set I want to grab this function and I want to call it from our start method so make sure you just put it in the start method okay so right at the start we want to initialize all of the fields from this from this setting structure Okay, so that's it for this class. Let's uh, save everything. As this video is already 20 minutes long, we will carry on this implementation in the next episode. So thank you very much for watching and see you again soon.